another thing that I think is kind of a touchy point, and I'm just gonna go here, okay? I'm just, I'm gonna take a sip of my coffee before I dive into this one. <laughs> a lot of us have stuff like that in our homes. And yeah, this is where we get to the real therapy. <laughs> Well, hello and welcome back to the house of Valentina. I'm Valentina and I'm a designer in the Atlanta area and I absolutely love my job. I get to work with people every day, helping them put together their homes. And for me, there's there's no better place than home. I know everything they say is really true. There is no better place than home. But sometimes what I have found is that there is a theme that sometimes people's homes are completely stressing them out. So today I wanted to talk about that subject. Let's talk about what things might be stressing you out in your home and easy ways that you can fix them. So I'm gonna go through each one of them. I'll offer you different tips and tricks. And I hope that at the end, you're gonna be left feeling super inspired and just, armed and ready to go through your home and make some small tweaks that'll really have a huge impact on your life. So I hope you will love this video. I hope you will wanna stick around, uh, hang out. We have an incredible community. Honestly, I can just tell you that House of Valentina, it, this is the most amazing community. It, the, the way that everybody get, has gotten to know each other, chit chat in the comments, support one another in their journey in creating their home. It's just incredible. And it's free to hit subscribe. So I hope you'll hit subscribe, become a part of our community here, and also give the video a thumbs up if this is a subject that you wish that you know people would talk about a little bit more. And let me know down in the comments which one of these really like hits strongest with you and maybe if there's another thing besides your spouse. <laughs> <laughs> stressing you out at home. <laughs> Let me know if there's anything else. Let's jump in. <laughs> Number one thing that I think really affects your stress levels in your home is clutter. So I know this is probably like the least popular thing. I, I didn't start with cleaning. <laughs> Cause I don't know about you, but that is my least favorite subject when it comes to the home. I don't, I don't want to talk about cleaning. Like I'm going to do it, but yeah, let's not make a big fuss of it. Right. Let's talk about decluttering though, because that is pretty important. And I do think that it really matters because if your home is cluttered, if you feel like there's no way to put things away or there's nowhere for like things to go, like nothing has its place this sort of feeling of chaos really just kind of builds on itself. And so you end up with piles of mail, you end up with toys all over the floor or things scattered all around. It, it's very normal to have some clutter in your home. I mean, even Marie Kondo recently came out and said even she has calmed down a bit on the tidying. <laughs> like, wow, <laughs> we should all be afraid. <laughs> But no, I, I really don't think we have to be afraid because I think you can actually have a few little tools in your tool bag that can really help you with decluttering. First of all, I think that if you don't have your drop zone figured out, your drop zone is just gonna be wherever it's convenient for everybody to put their stuff. So like in my own home, my kids know they take their school bags to their rooms. They take their shoes and they either have to put them in the front closet or they have to take them up to their own closet. Like we have a system in place that really just helps with some of those major drop zone points. Sports equipment has a place out in the garage. And so I think that if you have those little systems in place, that helps a lot. But then I think you have to kind of take it a little bit further. I think having some organizational tools, like having some liners in your drawers, uh, that way your silverware can go in there. I also, I also have them inside of our, we have a dresser because we don't have like a front console table that where we put everything. And so you open the drawer and then there's organizers inside of it. So there's a place for keys, there's a place for glasses. You can also add in some baskets around your house that will just help with everyday clutter. Everybody's got blankets, everybody's got toys or paraphernalia, pet toys, whatever it is, everybody's got stuff. I think really focusing in on great storage options like baskets and boxes will really help you to get rid of a lot of that clutter that can really stress you out in your home. It's an immediate thing. Next up, is sometimes a very touchy subject for people. I, I know this because I read your comments. <laughs> sometimes people get really bent out of shape about this one, 
But I really think that sometimes having just too much stuff in your house can really just stress you out. And sometimes people don't like that because they like to have their things. And if your things aren't stressing you out, then you don't need to get rid of them. But a lot of times having too much stuff in your home can cause you a lot of stress. So uh, I think looking at your home, take a peek, you know, walk around, take some pictures of your home, just on your phone or whatever, and just really look at your home and say, do I have too much stuff in here? <laughs> it's just too many things. Over the years, if you are one of our regulars here at House Valentina, you guys know, uh, one of the things that I started to do was I started to upsize the items and have fewer items in my home. And that helped me get rid of the feeling of clutter and too many things. Just a lot of little things can sometimes just, it gives you a lot to visually process and it can actually cause a lot of stress. So some people love to be maximalist. They like to have a lot of things. They do really well with all that. And then there's others of us that prefer to have things quite pared back. One of the things that stresses people out all the time, it's something that a lot of my clients will tell me is that they just aren't sleeping well in their home. So especially if we're working on a bedroom makeover, we talk a lot about what problems have been existing in the bedroom that maybe we can cure with the Design. So a lot of that will relate to say the curtains. These are things that really, really matter in a bedroom, especially. And of course, getting a good night's sleep does really help reduce your stress. So uh, one of the things we start with are the curtains, because if you don't have a blackout curtain in your bedroom, you might want to consider that you might need something, something either a shade with a blackout liner or curtains with the blackout liner, because ultimately really getting a good night's sleep that's not interrupted by the sun rising, maybe a little earlier than you would like, these things will really, really help you. Another thing that I think is really important is thinking about the mattress. Even though it's not maybe the most glamorous glamorous side of things when it comes to the bedroom, the mattress does actually matter. And if you've got a really old mattress, one that you're not sleeping very comfortably on, this is an easy change that you can make. Now, an even easier change to make is actually one that, this video is sponsored by Marlo. And uh, I really think, this is one that I talk about with my clients all the time, is the pillow. This is an easy, easy fix that you can make in your home that will dramatically reduce your stress. So Marlo has these absolutely incredible pillows. And we started using them, I think it's been at least a year and a half, maybe even longer now. I think it's even been longer. We fell in love with their pillows in our own home. I was having problems with my neck and so was Jack, my husband, and we were just on the hunt for the right kind of pillow. And so we decided to give Marlo a try. This is an amazing pillow for so many reasons. And we fell in love with it because it has an adjustable uh, zipper on it. This is so cool. So whether you're a back sleeper or side sleeper or stomach sleeper, the way in which you sleep on your pillow does vary what's gonna be most comfortable. So you might want something that's gonna be a little bit firmer. This one unzips on both sides. And so you're able to adjust how fluffy and how thick your pillow actually is. So I like to have a very squishy pillow like this, right? I love it like that. And so I have both zippers open on mine. My husband, Jack though, he prefers to have a firmer pillow. And so he keeps his zipper closed. This pillow is also hypoallergenic. It has the memory foam inside of it. Because we fell in love with these so much, I decided that this was gonna be the pillow that I always gave to my clients because how would I ever know exactly how my client is going to sleep and I wanna be able to finish their room off. So I started putting Marlow pillows into my clients' homes as well. And I have got so many fans of Marlow now <laughs> because they love the customization that's available on the pillow. Uh, a lot of them suffer from allergies and these pillows are perfect for them. And they're, they're just amazing. They're absolutely amazing. And so I would definitely recommend switching out your pillow and this will 100% give you a much better night's sleep. And Marlo is having their spring sale right now through the end of April where you can save up to 30% and you can use my link in the description. You'll save an additional 25%. I'll have all the details down below in the show notes for you, but definitely check out Marlo, you guys. Thank you again to Marlo for being our video sponsor. I know you guys will love it. All right, let's chat about some more things that stress us out in our home. One of those is, I know, I'm gonna, you guys, so many people are gonna be so aggravated with me for saying this, but I think too much color actually stresses people out. 
And there are people who love color so much that they are going to hate me for saying that. And I, I understand because some people just really thrive in color. And so as a designer, I never want to take that away from somebody if it brings them a lot of joy and it makes them feel really happy to be in their home. That is the ultimate thing that I try to tell everyone every time we do a video is that it's all about you. This is the one time in your life that something gets to be all about you. This is your home and it gets to be about what makes you the happiest. But what I have found is that a lot of color can almost be too energizing. There's a reason that they like to give color to babies because they're learning a lot and they're, it's stimulating for them. So color can be very stimulating and sometimes it can just be too much. I personally find that living in a neutral color palette that's really calm with a little bit of a, a jazzy pop for a little drama for that side of my personality, this really works for me. I, I really prefer it. I've had a lot of color in my house. I know it's hard to believe, but back throughout the years, uh, prior to about 10 years ago, I, I didn't do neutrals. I did all color and it just, I just, felt like it was just too much. It was always too busy and I was always changing it because I was always on the search for something that would help me to feel more at home and for us to feel more relaxed at home. So I found that for me, living in neutrals has really changed my life. It really helps me to stay calm. It's very a calming environment for everybody and I prefer it this way. That doesn't mean you can't do any color, but I do think that you have to kind of look around your house and, and ask yourself, if I have bright yellow walls, does this make me feel like sunshine all day or is it stressful for me? I would have a really hard time. I know this because I've tried it. I really didn't like having yellow walls. I didn't like having pink walls. I didn't like having turquoise walls. I didn't like having red. <laughs> Those colors were just too energizing for me and I have enough energy as it is. I didn't need my walls to be doing that for me. Instead, I found that it was better for me to have white walls, to have a really calming effect and I have found that it's been therapeutic. For sure. The other side of that is when you think about whether you've got the right colors in your home as well. So what will happen is you, oh, this happens a lot. A lot of people when we went through the gray phase, people just found it so depressing to be in gray. And that's a great neutral, right? That's a color that you think, oh, it's a neutral. This should be easy to live in. People found it very depressing. People sometimes feel beige to be very depressing. I think you can go with like creamier whites, whites, blacks. These colors tend to be quite neutral, but you might have a color in your home that just isn't the right color for you. And that is ultimately where you have to really analyze your own space, really look at what's working for you and decide what is best for you. And don't worry about what other people are doing on the street. Don't be thinking about resale value. Think about what you need in order to be able to come home at the end of the day and feel stress-free. Another big thing that creates stress for people is that they feel like their homes lack a certain coziness. I hear that a lot. They come home and it's stressing them out that they maybe just put down, like they bought a set of furniture and they have a couple things, but there's no coziness in the house. They haven't, they don't feel like they moved in. Does that make sense? Like a lot of times they feel like they didn't actually finish decorating the house. Like it's just functional. And so I think that coziness is a really big factor in reducing stress in your home. You guys have seen a lot of the ways that I like to add coziness to a home. I love to add pillows to the sofa. I love to lay down blankets. I love to layer the coffee table with books and you know, just some, some personal items. I think all of those things add to coziness. I think that also having a really nice plush rug to walk underneath adds coziness. And I think that also minding the lighting in your space, all of these things have a big impact on you. So you might be ready to buy some pillows. You might wanna look at somewhere like H&M Home. They've got a great selection of really affordable pillows. They've got blankets. Uh, I would say if you're looking for a rug, I would go to Amazon. I have an entire section 
collection in my storefront. It's just a little category there that shows you the different rugs that I think are great options, many of which I've actually purchased and use in my own home or my clients. I also have a lighting board over there. Of course, you can shop places like Ikea. You can shop at places like Pottery Barn and West Elm for lighting, but Amazon is another great source if you're trying to do it on a budget. But adding a, a lamp to the living room, adding lamps to the nightstands in the bedrooms, uh, really filling out your pillows and putting some great linens on your bed, uh, all those things are available at H&M Home and I think that you can really start to add some significant cozy factor into your home pretty quickly. So I will leave the links for all those items, as I said before, in the show notes for you. That way, if you want to look for a few items and you're wanting to do this on a budget, it is actually doable and it will really help reduce your stress. As I mentioned before, I like to have some personal items on my coffee table. I see this all the time. People do not feel at home if they have not added their own personality into their homes. As much as we love to travel and we get so inspired by hotel design. There's always so much to learn from hotels and how they put things together and hospitality and color palettes and all that. Ultimately, very few of us actually want to live in a hotel. <laughs> Most of us crave the personality that we have when we create a home. And so whether it's adding pictures and picture frames uh, to the walls or to your, to maybe your console table, if it's adding in some, just some personal touches, it can be as simple as greenery. Like I've got back here with some vases. I've got a really nice candle that I really love that's sitting here. It's these things that really show my personality that really help it to feel like it's mine. Another thing that I think is kind of a touchy point, and I'm just gonna go here, okay? I'm just, I'm gonna take a sip of my coffee before I dive into this one. <laughs> mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. A lot of times people have things in their homes that they don't really like. And a lot of the reason that they have those things is because they were given to them for free and they feel guilty about getting rid of them and paying for something because that one was free or they have family maybe that's pressuring them to keep something because it's a family heirloom or it was just something that was a hand-me-down, right? And somebody in the family is super sentimental and they get super bent out of shape if you talk about maybe not wanting that forever in your home. Or sometimes you have things in your home that have really bad memories attached to them. Uh, things that maybe remind you of things that make you sad. So a lot of us have stuff like that in our homes. and. Yeah, this is where we get to the real therapy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I think that we have to really look at those things and sometimes we just need to stand up for ourselves. When we first moved back from being overseas, I had a really hard time having certain photo albums out because every time I looked at them, it made me sad about the home that we had left. And it took a little while for me to not feel so sad about where we had left and for our new home to start feeling like ours again. And it's funny because you would think, oh, that's our memories. A lot of people would feel like that. And a lot of people, you know, made comments to me about like, well, you know, that'll make you feel more at home. It didn't, it made me sad. So I just simply put those away for a little while. I didn't get rid of them. I just put them away. You don't have to design your entire home around things that don't make you happy. And a lot of times what will happen is a client will say, this is the design style that I really like. And then they're like, okay, and then I've got this piece that my mother-in-law gave me. Can you just work the whole design around that? And I'm like, well, that doesn't go with what you said you wanted. So are you sure you want to design the entire room around a piece that you don't like? because it's not gonna end up looking like what you do like. And so you have to have those conversations with yourself. Uh, think about if Valentina was standing here, what would she say to me? I'd probably say, what would you like to do? Because I'm happy to design the room around that piece, but if it's something that's not gonna make you happy, we're gonna design an entire room around it and you're still gonna feel like something's not right in the room. And so maybe it's time to move that piece to a different space in the house. Maybe it's time to put it in storage or maybe it's time to give it back. I mean, I mean, is that really the end of the world? Okay, so that's what I would say. I'm gonna show a little tough love in that one because I think it's just that important. And I think that those things can cause you an enormous amount of underlying stress. It's just something that you can't put your finger on. And a lot of times it's that one. 
Okay, let's move on. This is another thing that's actually a really easy fix a lot of times, and that is the layout slash kind of functionality of a room. A lot of times when we move into a space, you guys, right, you guys don't move your stuff around the way that I do. I realize that about people, but even I have kind of come, I, I'm happy now with the way that this room is set up. We have moved this living room around probably 50 different ways. We've had different furniture in here. We've had different styles of furniture. We even brought a sectional in at some point, right? We've tried everything, but ultimately I found a layout that really just creates a lot of flow in my space and it's the one that just feels right. A lot of times when people move into their homes, they don't do what I did, right? They don't try things. They move in, they sit their furniture down and they don't move it again. And so it creates stressors because maybe you're having to walk around pieces. Maybe the layout isn't quite right and something about the room doesn't feel right and it causes underlying stress for you. Uh, sometimes you've bought pieces that are too big and they actually just over dominate the space and you can't live in the room. The, there are a lot of things that we do to our home like this related to the layout and the functionality that really causes stress. So I would look at the rooms that maybe don't feel quite right. Don't ignore that feeling. Ask yourself if there's a way to rearrange the furniture. Like what I did originally, I bought a sofa for this room and I ended up moving it into the sunroom for a long time while we were saving up money <laughs> for this room. <laughs> and then when I had money for that room, I moved the sofa up to Landon's room and that is where it now has stayed for a few years, okay? So it's been there for three years. Haven't even thought about moving it. It just works, right? Sometimes you can move the furniture that you already have around in the same room. You can create a new layout with what you've got. You can move it to a different spot in the home. Uh, and sometimes you actually just need to buy something different and you might need to save up, but having a plan in place immediately reduces your stress. The other thing that can also cause you a lot of stress is having an open floor plan. I know we've talked about this a lot. We talked about it a lot during the lockdown when everybody was suddenly at home, right? Like I'm so happy that that is becoming more of a distant thing. Thank you. So happy for that. But a lot of us are still working from home. Okay. And so for me, I put up doors on my office. I, I needed doors because I have a really hard time with a lot of noise. I'm, I work in a very quiet environment because my mind is working so much. I can't I can't function as well when the kids are coming through and the dog's running in and out and the doorbell's ringing. <laughs> there's a constant interaction and somebody's cooking something in the kitchen and there's smells and that's the problem with open concept, right? And that, that layout can sometimes actually cause us extra stress. We're never really alone <laughs> in an open concept, right? And so there's these underlying things that cause us stress. And maybe if you're arguing with your spouse or you're feeling agitated with each other, it might be because you're literally always looking at each other. So I think having doors up is an easier solution. It's not the cheapest solution. <laughs> no, it's not cheap to put up doors, but it has dramatically reduced my stress. You might need some curtains, you know, to dampen some sound in your room. You might want to put up some, just some more furniture that would just fill out the space in a different way. You might want to put up a wall. I don't know, but I would definitely think through the functionality and the layout of your space and how that might just be causing you some unnecessary stress. Our final one for today is one that I feel very passionately about. And sometimes it's unavoidable and sometimes you can totally avoid this one. I think having your work space in your sleep zone is a huge mistake. I think having your work zone even in your living room can also be a huge mistake. Most of us need to have some sort of quiet, some sort of, you know, uh, ambient <laughs> relaxation when we're working. Some people want to play their music. Some people want it to be quiet, but either way, having your work zone in the middle of your living room or especially in your bedroom where you literally wake up to your desk, like I just can't. I tried that once, I mean, we've moved 24 times and we've lived in this house now for over six years. So that lets you know in 24 years of marriage, we moved a lot. So I had a lot of experiences with different house setups and all that kind of stuff. And one time I tried to put the desk in the bedroom and I had to move it because I did not waking up and seeing the desk like that and the computer 
just caused me so much stress. I, I think it really does stress you out. And I think that this is a pretty easy fix. Move your desk just somewhere else. A lot of times people, it's better for it to be in the living room than it is for the bedroom. Does that make any sense? I have mine in the what technically is the dining room. A lot of times people do have, I know if you're in New York and you're like in a studio, like you just have to make do with what you've got. Uh, maybe you need to even leave the house to go work and you're just gonna work in a coffee shop. Uh, you're gonna need a third space, right? But having that office not in a high traffic area or in a place that's meant for relaxation, that will change your life. If, you're, if you've got some stress going on, you're trying to figure out what it is, I would look at that one and see that could be what is causing it. Those are just a few of the things that I think stress people out. It, I know that they've stressed me out in my life and I hope that it's things that I can pass forward to my clients in real life and to you guys as we learn and we grow together as a community. So I hope they've really helped you. I hope it's given you some food for thought. I'm very curious to read all of your comments. I hope you will leave those down below. Hit subscribe if you haven't already and give the video a big thumbs up. And don't forget, I'm gonna leave all the links for all the items I showed you in the video as fast as I can down in the show notes. And thank you again for joining me. And I can't wait to see you guys in the next one. Until then, cheers. Bye.